Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today is part two of the uh, Make a Travel Kit uh, lap book series. It is a kind of thing where I'm making it up as I go. So there's gonna be things in here that can change five or six times. <laughs> and uh, that's just how I, that's how I work. But anyways, uh, so the first video was um, just an introduction of the idea and uh, we did some embroidery to see if we want to use it on the cover or something. Um, so I wanted to start with the actual construction of the book. So I had a, um, I don't know where I put it now, a flower pattern, is it in here? A uh, flower pattern fabric that I had in the last video and when I was kind of playing with the idea of, of building the book, I found that it was a little bit too busy for my taste. Now, I still absolutely love the fabric because it has that watercolored look. But I think what I'm going to do is either use it on the inside of the book or um, just use it for accents. Um, anybody who follows my channel knows that I really do like the kind of vintage neutral tones. Um, I'm going to introduce some color in this book, but uh, I keep getting drawn back to the, that palette. So... That's what I've decided to use. So I found this piece of um, runner, like an old runner, table runner, and it has this really pretty embellishment at the bottom. And I've cut it uh, to fit roughly the size of a book I want to make. So I didn't take measurements. Everybody's book can be whatever size works for you. And I do hope you kind of follow along with me. I'm still at the trailer here, so I'm working on a very small table, and I have my sewing machine on it, so you're going to see me moving things over and over again and searching for things. Um, so I just have this little ruler here, and I'm going to say it is about uh, 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, about 29 inches long. So again, when you're building this, you can build whatever size you like. You're obviously going to have some sort of seam allowance where you're going to make the book a little shorter, a little longer. Um, and the reason I took this size was for this ruler. I want to be able to add a ruler into my journal, into my travel kit. And my paintbrushes were relatively the same size, along with a pair of scissors. So I want to make sure that my book can incorporate these types of items without poking up the top. Um, so you, you want to look through your stash of whatever theme travel kit you want to make. Um, in my case, it's just a book of supplies that I can use uh, that I can just grab and go. So it's going to have papers in it. It's going to have a little bit of everything and uh, it's going to get big, obviously, as we go. So that's why I'm opting for um, most likely a soft covered book. I might um, insert some cardboard after. We're, again, it's, we're just going to feel it out as we go. So uh, so this would be measure eight 10, 12 inches tall by 29 inches long. So that's what I'm working with. Um, and again, it could change. I might make it shorter, I might make it longer. Um, I then went ahead and cut some quilt batting, which I happen to have on hand, but you can use anything. I wanted to, I wanted the cover to have a little bit of meat to it in case we decide not to put make it hardcover. Um, I do want it to be able to handle some durability by getting beaten up and moved around in a suitcase or a purse or whatever it is you're going to carry it in. So the quilt batting was just an, another um, thickness that I want to add. But again, it's going to add bulk, so you might not like that part. It's really, it's really kind of up to you and your style. So um, this is, again, an experiment. We're just going to be playing with it. And I'll probably do something and realize I shouldn't have done it that way. But th that's how we learn. So that's uh, that's kind of what this, this, this video series is about. So I'm going to just fold it in half here. And I want to mark it with a pencil as to where my center fold is going. So I'm going to pencil in here. Little pencil. Um, and I'd, I'm not big on measuring. I'm more of an eyeballer. So I'm going to say that it's about, well, it's a ruler, so we'll do it. We'll measure it. So if I push on the quilt batting, it's three quarters of an inch on the line here. And I'm going to flip it over and do three quarters of an inch on this side. 
And this is going to be my spine in the center of the book. So my book width is going to be about that wide. So I probably, now that I'm thinking about it, might want to extend it to an inch. And that way I have a two inch spine so that when the things curve in, they have, um, when the arms curve in, and I'll show you what that, what I'm talking about in a second, uh, that that uh, they have some room here to move. So I'm just gonna add another quarter inch onto that line to make it an inch from the center. So like I said, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth here. Um, it might get a little confusing, I apologize, because I I'm usually make, make my stuff and then, so then I know how to do it and then film a video on how I do it. And in this case, I'm making it up as I go. So there's gonna be some mistakes. So there we go, there's an inch from the, the middle. So now that I have that, I know that these arms that are gonna fold in, I can determine the size. So let's just get rid of the quilt batting. We don't need that right now. So if we're gonna fill, we're gonna fold this in the half mark, and you know what, let's put a pin there. We've got some pins kicking around here somewhere. There we go. We'll put a pin in there. And then we'll know the center of our book. We'll just have to try and remember not to sew through anything. Try and sew through these pins, which is something I would do. And it's Canada Day here, so happy Canada Day to anybody who is Canadian, I guess. Um, of course, by the time this airs, it uh, it might be uh, July 4th by then, for all I know. It takes forever to upload a video. Uh, but anyways, happy Canada Day. So, and it's raining here, so it's a bit of a bummer. And it's pretty dark here, so I apologize if the video, if, if it looks a little dark in the video and there's a lot of shadow. Okay. So I know that I'm going an inch away from the center. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I put the, the pin through the middle of the exact half way mark. Um, and now I can flip it over and I can see just how big I wanna make these arms that pull out. So I'm going to say about there, because there's an inch here on the center spine. So we can actually write it on the, in the inside though. It's gonna get covered with the quilt batting, but it might help us visualize how wide. There's also gonna be some sort of seam allowance. I haven't decided what kind of stitch or anything I wanna do yet. Um, and then I wanna give this a little bit of a fold as well. So I'm gonna do a three quarter mark on this one. And the reason why I'm doing that because what I think I'm gonna to have to do is put some sort of reinforcement uh, cardboard bent cardboard in here when we slide it in just so that there there's a little bit more stability because if it's just fabric it's going to do a lot of this and I want it to be able to open up and stay a little bit more rigid so there's the um there's the center of that and again you can use the the sizes that work for you the dimensions that work for you this is just kind of giving you the idea of how I'm building it so I'm just gonna mark the center of this so I have a little clearer visual. And then we'll do the same side on this, same thing on this side. So there I know that that's the center line of that. And I can make this short if I want. So this is how the book is gonna close, right? So we'll wanna make sure that it, I at least get it lined up with the other side. Kind of visually line her up. Make sure the book closes pretty even. And again, the sewing, I'm not a good sewer, so none of this will be straight anyways, but <laughs> it's nice to kind of visually see how to build it. And then I'm just gonna give myself that quick little mark that will play a role a little later with the sewing. So three quarter inch. Oh, that shifted a bit pinch it and then do three quarter inch on this side and it's just kind of a guideline to my sewing and then one more pin 
And then I know that this center mark, roughly, is the center of the fold. Okay, so what I was thinking I would do now is sew the quilt batting on. Try to give us a little bit more um, rigidness to the book while we're working on it. So I don't want to cover my, I don't want to put my inside fabric in, uh, simply because we're going to sew things to the covers and stuff, and I don't want that to show through on the inside of the book. So I'm not going to bother taking my time pinning it. I'm going to leave the top of the book unsewn so that I can um, I can slide cardboard in here and like a cardstock and decide at the last minute to make the book more rigid, uh, if that makes sense. So for this, I'm just going to sew. I think what I was thinking is I'm going to keep it a very rustic looking edge around the book. I don't want a perfectly finished book. Um, just not worried about it. Uh, if you're into making really nice edges, you could put it reverse here and then turn the whole thing inside out. Like we could try that if you want, uh, but I, I'm not big on sewing. So if you were to sew it the right sides together, for example, and then left the top open and then folded it all out, you'd all these raw edges would be tucked inside. Um, but I'm not concerned about the raw edges. I, again, I like the rustic look. It depends if you want a polished finish or not. So I'm just going to wing it because that's what I do. <laughs> so again, I apologize for the shadows. You probably won't be able to see it. Uh, I'm just going to give myself an eighth inch of seam allowance. And you're going to see that my stitching is very crooked. Um, but to me, it adds, it adds to the charm and it's kind of... It's just how my stuff looks. All right, so I'm just gonna sew it all through here. And I'm sorry if the camera shakes. It is attached to something other than my table, but uh, you still never know. It's gonna shake the whole trailer. And then I'm gonna sew all the way along the bottom. Hopefully my sewing machine cooperates. Oh, and it already has not. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be one of those things. My sewing machine is very old and there's days where it cooperates and I think it's on its way out because it's, uh, it's unpredictable at best. So if the thread breaks here, we'll skip that part because I cannot sew the needle without a flashlight. I can't see anything in this trailer this dark. Okay, let's try again. I might have the tension off. All right, bear with me here. I could have had this done, but I wanted to I wanted to show you kind of like the the part of it where um where I kind of put, build the whole thing together and kind of the thought process behind it, like leaving the top open so that I can actually go ahead and add some uh, cardboard stock or whatever after if I have to. So at the bottom, I decided just to do a quick zigzag stitch, trying to line up my quilt batting. And again, you don't have to use quilt batting. You can use whatever you've got in your repertoire. You just want to maybe use a couple of, of pieces of fabric put together um, just so that it has some meat. And I just happen to have quilt batting. I'm not sure where I got it from. It was probably a scrap in a bag. And I managed to hang on to it. Because it's pricey stuff, quilt batting. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go up here, and again, sorry if you can't see, you probably can't. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna cut it here. So what I'd like to do now, so there you go, it's it's just sewn, I just sewn it down and across, so this is now attached. Um, I'm gonna go up the center here. So I wanna make sure that nothing's ballooning too much, because I don't sew straight. So I'm gonna go up the center where my needle, where my pin is. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna go up on the sides where my lines are 
more because I want to keep this little channel open in case I need to add some sort of um, reinforcement in there, which I think I will, just to make the book a little bit more stable. So I'm gonna go back to a straight stitch here and just go up the center on one side. And you probably, if you pinned it, things would probably end up a lot straighter. But you know, I see it as more of experimental. And uh, if it doesn't work out, I just start again. I just don't air this video and start again. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna go down the other side of that pin. And I'll probably just do this one just to show you what I mean. And maybe the next one because I do want to put some embellishments on the cover today as well. Uh oh, did I break the thread? I think I did. Bear with me. Sorry. Should have enough thread here to do the next channel, and then you can figure out how I do the rest there just by repeating this process because you probably can't even see what I'm doing. I can hardly see it. It's so dark out. What a bummer to rain on Canada Day. Those Canadians are used to it, I guess. Comes with the territory. All right, so there's the first channel. So you can see the sewing on either side. So if I choose to reinforce the, the edge of the book, I can put some cardstock in here. So it just leaves me that option for later. I may use it, I may not. And what it does too, doing this, is it kind of gives us a visual as to where our um, covers sit because they all fold on each other. I'm just gonna do that one. So the sewing machine, sewing isn't so tedious. Please tell me it sold, it sewed. Did it sew? I only sewed halfway. <laughs> okay, but you can fast forward this part. I know I would. Fast forward this messiness, unprofessionalism, and then catch up to me when we move on to the next spot. The problem is I need my sewing machine for this whole video, and it is just not cooperating. I'm gonna need this sewing machine a lot for this book. So I'm getting a little nervous that it's not going to cooperate at all. Oh boy. Okay, let me just sew the rest of this back down. And push my luck with the sewing machine. I don't want to use a lot of glue. I want to use the sewing machine because that one, I love the look of the stitches. I'm going to do this one real quick and hopefully it cooperates. And that, like some of you might not even have a sewing machine. So if that's the case, you can hand stitch this or you can use glue. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. All right. Jeez Louise. Sorry about that. Let's cut these little stragglers off. And we'll just look at what we've done here. So if you think about the way this folds into uh, those pieces, this is actually the main cover of the book, not this. This is the part that you'll see on the outside. So this folds, and then this folds in. Cut, we'll turn that off after, and then this folds. So here's the cover, right? This is the cover of the book. And so you can see how soft it is, like it feels like a blanket. So that's why I'm thinking I'm going to probably insert, at least in these channels, some cardboard. So it's it's got a little bit more stability. So here's the cover right here. So this is what we can decorate. So the finished edge is okay down the bottom, but the top is raw. So I have to make, make sure that I figure out, uh, make sure I leave enough room for pockets and things like that to hold my tallest tools. So I know that I'm going to lose maybe, I can take it off an inch at the top if I have to, right? Okay, so now we can have some fun decorating the, the cover and I don't even know what I'm gonna do for the cover. Um, 
but I thought we could play today. So I did pull out a few things. So this is uh, one of the original paintings to a, one of my digital kits. And I thought, why not use some originals? Uh, what else am I going to do with them, right? So I might as well use them up. And I really like the colors. And of course, it's got a botanical theme. So this is painted on watercolor. And I have shown uh, a couple of videos on how I play loosely like this on watercolor with stamps. These are some of the stamps I've made. Um, so you can look up some videos there and see what inspires you to decorate your cover. Maybe you've got a master board that you've made that you'd like to incorporate. Um, or if you, if you even have a theme, because like I said, my, my go-to themes are always botanicals, but, um, and I'm drawn to neutral colors. So chances are that's going to be in this book. All right. So I know what my guidelines are for my stitching or here and here for my cover. So I, I quite like a big piece of this. So let's chop a big piece. And what else can we put on there? Doesn't doesn't even have to be straight. And what else did I have? I had a couple of scraps of fabric. So I thought we could throw some fabric back on top. And I love to mix mix things. So kind of make a master board um, using different materials, not just paper and not just fabric. And so we can throw that on there. There's some lace that I have, which has that nice brown natural color that I like. Coffee dyed, I coffee dyed this lace. So maybe a little piece right here. And again, no idea what I'm doing. Just laying it on, moving things around, playing. And we did the embroidery. So I think it, it would be kind of fun if we could turn that into Maybe a pocket, something like that. Maybe move this to the inside or put it on the next flap over in a pocket. I think we'd like that. I think I'll hold off on that one. And maybe something going down like this. We could make this a pocket on the side if we want. I don't like to put too much like pocket wise on, um, on the cover because the covers are movable so things can fall out easy but it's still nice to have that pocket option all right let's try it let's sew this down i'm just going to move it here as opposed to trying to bring that sewing machine back in let's see if i can get it to cooperate so i am just gonna sew this maybe move this down a little bit because maybe we could stamp something up here all right, wish me luck. And I think I'll zigzag just for some fun texture. Let the sewing come out because I did. I do have a neutral color thread on the top. And uh, again, I'm sorry that it's not in view, but you can't really see it anyways with the with the dark. And then I'll switch to a straight stitch here. So the, the original pick painting that I'm using that are part of my digital kits is done on watercolor paper. Um, so it, it is nice and thick. So I can handle stitches really nice. All right. So that's sewn. I kind of like the uneven edge. So we sew that back on there. We can sew this to it need something else what else should we put on there i have this fabric it's a bit too colorful for me maybe some papers so i have this really old fun music note cover uh, again just making it up as i go So I think I'll put a little bit of glue on that. Let's see, glue handy. What glue do I have? Here we go. A little stick. A little purple stick. 
and I'll probably end up inking it up after. And put that down here, just for some more texture. It's kind of fun. And then I think I'm gonna sew this on here. Right now we'll just glue it till I figure out what else I'm gonna do. And you know, nothing's permanent. So like if you do all this and then you sew it to your book and then the next day you're like, well, I sure like that, it all comes apart. You, know, you just pick it apart. So don't, don't worry too much, think too much about things because um, it can easily change. I think we need a little weight at the bottom here. Maybe a little bit more of this paper. Just a little, something a little heavy at the bottom would be helpful. Something like that. That works. That works for me. Hopefully that's on camera. <laughs> so hopefully you fast forward and, and are back with me now. <laughs> Past all the ridiculousness with the sewing. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sew this down. I'm gonna go for it. So I'm gonna stay within those sew lines so I know that these are the, the seams, not the seams, but what do they call them? The um, spine. And let's just throw that in here. I need a little bit closer because you can't really see. And I wanna make sure I'm straight on the side here. Okay. Let's. Ooh, my glue's coming off. Okay, Michelle, get it together. Oh, that's come off there, that's why. And I gotta remember my seam allowance at the top as well. That's probably what's throwing me off right now. I'm gonna make sure I leave enough room at the top. <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right. Let's get real here. It's thick, so it doesn't want to fit under my machine. Oh, okay, there, I think I got it. Let's go for it. And I'm going to switch it to a zigzag. Ooh, it's thick. My machine's not liking it. My poor old girl, she's not liking it. Am I going crooked? <laughs> See, this is why I like to do projects first and then teach people. So I know it looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> As opposed to, oh, what is she doing? <laughs> While it's in here, I'm gonna sew the bottom too, I think. Come on, work with me here. Ooh. Let's just sew that in. If I don't break the thread. Okay, let's see. Let's see what I did. Yeah, she's pretty thick, so my poor old machine's not loving it. Okay, she's sewn. Whew! All right. So again, I want to make sure I have that seam allowance at the top to sew off this raw edge here. So you're going to make sure you kind of bear that in mind. So this is kind of the cover so far. Right. And then this, of course, we'll get, this is the bend. And so, I mean, we can embellish that too after we've decided whether or not we want to put in some harder material there but I, I'm hoping you can visualize it hoping it makes sense it's really hard to kind of show because the material is so soft I'm just going to cut off this extra quilt batting here it's getting in the way so that goes there that goes there and then that's the cover okay that makes sense all right, so what else can we do to the cover? 
So we can leave this as a pocket, which means we need to sew this down. But uh, I think maybe we'll do some stamping. I got these stamps the other day. I think they're so pretty. I haven't used them yet. So let's throw... Uh, hopefully they... I should maybe practice one, but stamp that material right there. I don't think I want to go black, but maybe a really nice dark brown here. And find a dark brown. I think that's the darkest brown I have, which is the photo. If I can use the other side of this case, the photo um, vintage photo. Uh, it's not going to be dark enough. So let's go with the black is a bit darker than what I would like but I think it won't show up as much as I'm thinking anyways so I'm just using the other side of the CD case which um, came with, uh, with these things I got from Value Village these stamps hope it works I haven't ooh, I haven't used them yet so hopefully they're nice but again, if I don't like them, I'll just cover it or take it off and and retry. So that's cute. I like that. Maybe put another one up top here. And you can stamp right on the fabric. So I mean, you don't even have to sew anything to to the book. You can just stamp your own fabric. Just a little bit up there. Yeah, I lo really love the delicateness of that. It's really pretty. Okay, let's sew the top. And it's just so it's officially a pocket. And then we'll probably wrap it up for today. Since nothing's going my way with the sewing machine. All right, where's the pedal? There it is. It gives you an idea of, you know, what you can start with your book. Gives you an idea of measurement wise, you know, what you want to put in it, what's the tallest and widest thing you need to put in your book. And uh, there's our little pocket, which is actually a pretty big pocket. So we could sew right through and make two little pockets. Do we want to do that? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. I'm going to do it off center though. I don't like things symmetrical all the time. So I'm going to put a pocket right off center here. And uh, so I have a bigger one at the bottom and a taller one at the top, a narrower one at the top. Sorry, it's off camera again, but it's such an encumbersome thing to move. So that you can see there's gonna be quite a few little videos to this, I'm trying to keep them relatively short, just to get the juices flowing on your own project. Um, so here's a pocket here, and here's a pocket here. Yay, <laughs> yay. Okay, so you're gonna sew another two lines down here to create this channel, which is a, again, another, what did we call them? Oh my goodness. I've forgotten what they're called again. Um, you know, the part of the book here. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to sew another one. And then, so you should have three of those, the widest one in the middle. And then again, it's creating our lap book, which is going to be a fold out style lap book full of fun goodies. Okay, so there we go. Uh number two <laughs> page number two so have fun decorating your cover again the cover doesn't have to be all finished we didn't, we're not doing the inside lining yet um so all this stitching is going to get hidden which is kind of what i want to do i don't want to show all of it um so we can make some adjustments and then next week um i'll come back and i'll have this part sewn and um, we'll maybe decorate a few more panels and then we will start building up the pockets and everything to sew and build into our book. Okay, have a great day, guys. Take care. Bye.